Trying to figure out which probiotics to take when you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth can be confusing. When do you take them? How do you take them? Which ones do you take? Well, one thing is for sure, just taking any probiotic is not going to give you the results that you're looking for. Only a very select few will work. Well, if you're ready to learn which ones and how to maximize their effects, stay tuned. If you're about ready to pull your hair out trying to figure out which probiotic to take for SIBO, well, you've landed at the right location. Today, I'm going to walk you through a complete guide on probiotics for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. But before we do, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Arlen Hill, and I help first-time and recurrent SIBO sufferers restore their gut function by targeting all three phases of the condition to resolve symptoms in a timely manner. You came to this video looking for guidance. Well, here's what I'm going to give you. You're going to get the why, the what, the when, the how, and what not to do when it comes to probiotics for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So let's take a quick peek at this, and then I'll jump into each one of these. So on the why, I want to talk to you about why you want to take probiotics during SIBO. A little ironic given that we're talking about adding bacteria in to a scenario where there's already too many bacteria in the first place. Hmm, that's interesting. We'll delve into that. We want to talk about what to take. Any probiotic just won't do, so we've got to narrow down which ones you need to be thinking about. Well, when do you take these probiotics? Do you take them during treatment, after treatment, before treatment? And what time of day do you take them? Well, we're going to talk about that as well. And how do you take them? Should you take them with food, without food? With water, we're going to get into all of that for you. And lastly, and this is what you don't want to miss because this is going to reduce your risk for exacerbating bloating, gas, brain fog, all these things that tend to be a part of SIBO. We're going to drastically reduce your risk associated with that. So we'll talk about what not to take and clear up some confusion because, again, just any probiotic is not going to do. So let's delve into the first one of these, which is the why. Why take probiotics during SIBO? And again, it's a bit of an irony because when you think about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, it's an overgrowth. There's already too many bacteria present. But what we also want to keep in mind here is that it's not just the number of bacteria, it's also the type of bacteria that are present. We can have what are known as aerodigestive SIBO, which means that we've got an overgrowth of organisms coming from the mouth, from the airway passages down, or we can have what's known as a colonic type of SIBO, which means that we've got an overgrowth of the organisms that are typically seen in the large intestine. But the reason that you would consider a probiotic when it comes to SIBO is that probiotics could effectively decontaminate SIBO. The there is evidence to support that. And when I say decontaminate, I mean that it clears up the SIBO. It knocks down this overgrowth. And keep in mind that what we're talking about is the an active scenario of SIBO that is occurring. So we're introducing probiotics into an active SIBO situation. And I'm making a point about this because this is going to become a point of differentiation later as to when you should not use probiotics as it relates to SIBO. These probiotics have also been shown to decrease hydrogen concentration. They've been shown to relieve abdominal pain. Abdominal pain is one of the primary symptoms associated with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. But these are all active situations. So when we talk about probiotics, we can't think about probiotics for this condition in regards to prevention. It's not for preventing, it's for active management. And just to give you an impact of how, how uh, much of an impact that, or to give you an idea of how much of an impact that these probiotics can have, that there have been pilot studies and other studies that have showed that probiotic combinations that were more effective than metronidazole, there's been that uh, studies that show that um, they've illustrated that the organism can uh, literally, when you put them head to head against the antibiotic, it can outperform the antibiotic. Now, take that as what you will. That's not really the intent here because we still want to introduce some type of antimicrobial approach to SIBO. And whether that's an antibiotic or antimicrobial herbals, 
what we're going to be talking about here is really an adjunct to that as opposed to an alternative. That's not really the way that I would suggest to look at this. It's more of an adjunct as opposed to an alternative. So the other reason that you would consider probiotics is that really all studies for the most part that have looked at the, at least the ones that I've reviewed recently that have looked at the addition of a probiotic in SIBO, the outcomes were better than the control group. So when you just look at the group that didn't have the probiotic and the group that did have the probiotic, the group that did have the probiotic always seemingly performed better. All right, so that's the why. That There's, there's a good backing for why we would want to introduce these probiotics. But that leads us up to, well, what do we take? What are we talking about here? Well, there's going to be a general theme in this, and this is important because this is going to be, this is going to help you differentiate as well. So the general theme when it comes to what to take is that less is more. And that means fewer strains. So not having, when you look at a label on a bottle, not having multiple strains that are showing up on that label where you're up in the you know seven plus range or you just see this long laundry list of all these different probiotics that are in there, that's not ideal when it comes to SIBO. So fewer strains is more ideal. The other thing that's more ideal is lower CFUs. And CFU stands for colony forming units. That's the unit of measurements for probiotics. And this is, this is very much the opposite of the high count mentality that has perpetuated for so long. The mentality has been take more probiotics, take a higher CFU number and saturate the environment in the gut and that'll give you improved gastrointestinal health. Well, that's not the case when it comes to SIBO. In fact, the higher those numbers go, the less efficacious, the less beneficial the probiotic intervention is going to be. In fact, lower numbers of probiotics are more beneficial when it comes to SIBO. Now, when we talk about probiotics, there's two categories of probiotics here. And again, we're still under the what to take. And so the first one is going to be a bacterial probiotic. That's what most people are accustomed to. And there are several species, I won't say several, there are a good handful of species that have been alluded to as being beneficial for, for SIBO. But in general, the data on those is fairly limited. However, there is one bacterial species that does seem to continue to be noted as being beneficial when it comes to SIBO, and that organism is called Lactobacillus plantarum. And so when we look for a bacteria-based probiotic, Lactobacillus plantarum is the organism that we want to focus on. Again, there's others, but this is the one we would focus on. And this is a hardy organism. It's one that has been noted as being very resilient. It's resistant to a lot of insults that would otherwise kill off other forms or would kill off other species of bacteria. So Lactobacillus plantarum is the bacterial organism of preference. But remember, it's not just bacteria that we can lean on here. We can also lean on fungal species. And the fungal species that has shown consistent benefit in SIBO is known as Saccharomyces boulardii. And Saccharomyces boulardii is effective alone. It can also be used with antibiotics or antimicrobials. And because it's a fungus, if you do end up taking an antibiotic, I tend to recommend antimicrobial herbals. But in the case of an antibiotic, it's not going to kill off the Saccharomyces boulardii. And so Saccharomyces boulardii is certainly a favorite. It is one that should be considered as well. All right, so that's the why, that's the what. Now let's get into the when to take probiotics. And the best time to take these probiotics is with an active overgrowth. We're not looking to take these when we're, when we're thinking in the mode of prevention. There's other strategies for that that I'll talk about in other videos, but the idea here is that you want to use this with an active overgrowth. That is the primary time to consider a probiotic as it relates to SIBO. And you want to take this during the antimicrobial phase. So what that means is when you're using your antibiotic or your herbals, that is the time you want to use this. So for example, a lot of times I'll set up a 30-day protocol and during that 30-day protocol is when we're considering the use of a probiotic. 
It's not going to be after that antimicrobial protocol. It's not going to necessarily be before that antimicrobial protocol, but it's going to be during the antimicrobial protocol. And the reason being here is that it amplifies the effectiveness of those antimicrobials. Now, what about the time during the day? When would you take it during the day? Well, honestly, it doesn't really matter if you take it during the morning or during the evening. There's not going to be much of a difference on that. So truly, whatever works for your lifestyle and your schedule is when you want to do it. But you want to make sure that you're getting it in. Now, are you starting at this point to ask yourself, where where can you find some of these probiotics? I've told you about the... Uh, Saccharomyces boulardii, I've told you about Lactobacillus plantarum. So I'd imagine many of you are starting to think, okay, where can I start to find these at? Well, listen, don't worry. There'll be no need for you to go searching around the internet to find these. You're not going to have to comb the aisles at the local health food store. I, I don't want you to do that. I've shared some links with you in the description below. So just go check those out. But before you click off of the video onto one of those links, you still need to know how to take the products and what to avoid. We want to make sure that we want to know what not to do as much as we want to know what to do. So let's talk about how to take these. And let's start off by looking at, do you take them with food or do you take them away from food? So which is going to be the preference here? Well, the preference is going to be with food on this. And the reason being is that we want to take the antimicrobials away from food so we want to take those probiotics at a different time than the antimicrobials. So that means that we would take those with food. Antimicrobials away from food, probiotics with food. All right. And now you're dosing because, again, this is how to take. And remember, we're, run, we're running with this general theme of less is more. That's the goal here. So when it comes to Lactobacillus plantarum, about 3 billion CFUs, or what you might consider about one capsule per day, it's pretty easy to get 3 billion CFUs in a capsule, but most of the studies that have looked at this organism stay pretty low. They stay around that 3, 3 billion CFU mark. They may fluctuate a little bit here and there, but that's generally the mark that they're looking for. So that's the number you should be thinking about. When it comes to Saccharomyces boulardii, Saccharomyces boulardii, you only wanna take two capsules a day on this. Just one in the morning, one in the evening, again with food. But remember, if you take more, you're not doing yourself a favor. In fact, you're actually creating a scenario where the product is going to be less beneficial. So don't take the old adage of, of more is better. More is not better in this case. Less is better. That's what you want to think about. Now, that's answering the why, the what, the when, the how. Let's move now into what you want to what you uh, want to not do. What do we not want to take here? And this is where we can get into some big confusion on this and we need to differentiate probiotics into two categories because any probiotics not going to do and the probiotics that you're looking for are not the majority of what's out there. So there is a difference between probiotics in that they can be differentiated into categories of what might be considered maintenance versus therapeutic. And most products in the marketplace are maintenance oriented. They're not therapeutic in nature. And this is how you recognize a maintenance based product. Maintenance products are generally going to have seven or more strains in there. They're going to have very high CFU counts, 20 billion. 50 billion, 100 billion, 250 billion. The numbers just keep getting higher and higher, but again, that's not what you're looking for. So we're thinking more in regards to therapeutic approaches, and this is where as more information comes out about how probiotics can affect specific conditions, what we see is that what we're looking for are very specific strains of probiotics. That's the goal here. We want very specific strains and we want them at very specific dosages. So you're thinking in the context of not the average maintenance probiotic, you want to be thinking about a very specific therapeutic probiotic. So here's the summary, if you will, is that when you talk about probiotics as it relates to SIBO. All probiotics are not equally effective in SIBO. The success with probiotics in SIBO is highly dependent on the strain and the number of organisms that's in the product. So if you felt like today's guide was helpful for you, 
Well, here's another video I want you to watch. It's going to tell you if digestive enzymes are beneficial in SIBO.